Is the picture okay? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, as promised, we're going to start off the two peas in a podcast this evening on a slightly different note. As you know, I've always spoken about stories growing up in a small town, Port Antonio, Portland. But I'm going to take a slightly different tack on it this evening. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit, take a very light take on the language, because the language is basically the foundation of our lives. So as you know, like fire, like salt, like sound, like language, is what defines a civilization and hence its culture. Primarily, as we know, our language of choice, by virtue of how we inherited our language and so on, living in Jamaica, living in small town Jamaica, it's primarily patwa, what we call broken English. And there's a many, there are many ways that people define it, broken English. There are parts and parts of other languages that have been interspersed in it, and so on. But more importantly, our daily communication with each other can be primarily patwa, so, so to speak, and invariably we try to speak <laughs> what we call good English. Now, I always like to play with words. Take one word, twist it up, and make fun of words when I write, when I speak. But primarily, my language of comfort, like your comfort food, like you cook up sausage and dumpling and banana. My language of comfort is patwa, so to speak. Now, this evening, bringing on board a man who I've known my entire life. Our lives took different paths. I, for one, cursed like a sailor. This man became an academic, a teacher, mentor, stayed in academia for his entire life and did some really great things. So I'm gonna just take this opportunity to introduce my brother, Anthony Perry. And for that, Tony, I just wanna take a minute or two, introduce yourself to the audience, and then we kind of just take a tap into what we were talking about in terms of the language. Thanks, Paul. First of all, I want to take up the old clothes you have a hang up back of you, all right? Anyway. <laughs> There's a significance of having those multi- yeah, I know, I know, I, I know. Yes, sir. I know, yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you said, Paul, I spent my entire life in education, I think I spent only one year working at the parish library just after a year after I left Titchfield. And then I went into what was called, it was really a crash program in education, in teaching, that they were recruiting high school graduates. And Paul, way back in the early 1960s, you know, the numbers of trained teachers in our primary schools across this country was very few. Sometimes in some schools, the only person who were trained were the principal and the vice principal. Wow. So there was, a, there was a program at Canewood, which is off Arnold Road in Kingston, that I applied to. And, and I tell people, when you grow up rural, and look a certain way with a certain hairstyle and a certain pigmentation. You either became a teacher, a nurse, policeman, work in the post office, or work with government. Wow. There are some professions that are just totally outside. And I didn't choose teaching. Teaching chose me because of my circumstance. But Paul, I've had absolutely no regret. I was flung in headways, footways, sideways into a school in Trenchtown, Trenchtown Comprehensive. It was, at that time, the largest primary school in the English-speaking Caribbean. It had over 2,000 children. I may talk about poverty that will never, I cannot, that's a whole different story. But then I moved on. I, I went to teacher's college. I got trained, got my certification, and stayed in the classroom. I went on to university, um, got my first degree, my second degree, my third degrees, at UE and went on to University of Toronto, where I did um, curriculum, lang language education, because yes. I'm primarily an English language and English literature teacher. 
Right. Paul, I was saying to a colleague the other day that the day I discovered Caribbean and West Indian literature was a day when I said, why am I reading Shakespeare? Because this man's English. I had no English person writes and speaks like that. <laughs> Which probably segues, yes. <laughs> segues into much of what yes. we are going to talk about. And Paul, we could go on forever. Right. I want to disabuse people of this notion that Jamaican patois is broken English. Right. Or there's any such thing as bad English. We in sociolinguistics and language education talk about Englishes. Because Paul, even in England, there are variations of English. Right. And we know how we have come to know the languages. And yeah. Paul, you and I have also talked a lot about the Jamaican patois you hear in urban Kingston is not the same in um, Belfield in, in West Milan. And if you are rural and of a certain age, there's a certain patois you speak, which is not urban. And I just jot down a few things because so sometimes, Paul, people like you and I can flip between the languages. Right. That we can move but, but, from... Hold, hold a thought there. You say we can flip between... It. Where do you think that foundational um, development came from? The ability to just move between languages? I think it has come by our socialization and a, yeah. a certain, certainly for us. Right. I, we said, I came from a family where my, my, my grandmother, my parents, and my older siblings, you were, as you said, were the sailor... Who, who cuss, you know, <laughs> dog, people say dog, rotten. But that was a language you learned. Yeah. I never learned that way. I didn't grow up hearing much of that. And in fact, you know, murderation, if your mother, <laughs> my mother ever heard me cuss. Yeah. So even now, Paul, when, I mean, I'm I am not, and I, I am not privileging standard English. I am not privileging any language over another. The unfortunate thing about Jamaican patois is that a lot of people, middle class and upper class, Privileged standard Jamaican English, and I'm saying standard Jamaican English and not proper English, because there's no such thing as proper, correct English, because I'm even in England, there are variations of that language. And those persons who are listening to me, if you really want to get a sense of all the business of language development, listen to some of the YouTube conversation of Noam Chomsky. He's one of these outstanding linguist who is yes. also he comments about a lot of things about right. the development of language and how people come to know language and Our how we use language indeed. and i'm gonna go i'm gonna go back to portland because i was talking to a friend of mine who has a niece who lives in saint margaret's bay she's in primary school and her parents speak jamaican patois paul she speaks standard jamaican english at home and at school and her uncle, who is a teacher, is fascinated. And I don't know why we should be fascinated by this, because we sometimes really don't know how people learn languages, you know, how we learn language. But here is this primary school. I think she goes to St. Margaret's Bay Primary or it's Hobie. I'm not sure. But she speaks standard Jamaican English. Which you're is talking, the, which you're is talking right now? In, right, right now, now speak, as right. we speak. Okay. And we, because we, we it, it's, it's fascinating because... She 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 hears the language of her peers, which is Jamaican patois. She hears in the language of her teachers, which and of course, you know, the teachers them do this, you know, them schizophrenic okay. teachers are schizophrenic themselves about their use of language. Right. And and so Paul, one of the things we want to understand, and I and I said we want our listeners, certainly I want my you know, as much as I am fluent, I think in English and standard Jamaican English. I write in standard Jamaican. Most of my conversations are in standard English. And of course, you know, we all do the code switching. Right. Which is to get the kind of attention we want, depending on where we are, we will move between the Jamaica, the patois and the standard Jamaican English, depending on where we are. And I, I've told about the experience of a woman who wanted to get some money from the bank in the days long before bank card. And she, they were telling her she needs her passbook to get her money. And she said, look here, me carry me money come here. Me never come in a passbook, me want money. <laughs> if you not give me money, me take off my clothes in the bank. And the bank manager came out and saw her and said, please, don't let her take off her clothes. Just tell her that when she's coming again to bring her passbook, but remember now, Paul, 
oftentimes we look at patwa either to cost people, we see it only as a language to cost people or to deride or to, or to tell jokes. Because even when we read Louis Ben in a part, he believes that Louis Ben was always giving jokes. The woman was making some profoundly serious, deeply philosophical, sociological, psychological commentary about. Take this whole piece about colonization research in reverse. Jamaicans have gone and changed the nature of language use in North America and in England. Yes. And what has helped the Jamaican Patwa Paul? Yeah. Reggae music, a rasta. Yes. And our food. Okay? Yes. And the variations across this country with food. With food in particular. Is very profound. Profound indeed. Yeah. Indeed. And 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 the language is also very dynamic. Paul, there are some inner city you know if you have a conversation with them tonight, right. you might as well use one translator. <laughs> and if you don't understand this business of language, you know, we'll understand the language. We believe that language stays put. Every year, Paul, the dictionaries add new words. Yes, indeed. Words that are commonly used and everybody accept them to be so. So I just want us, you know, our, our listeners yes. to understand that there is this business about, about bad English and then chit chat body. Paul, conversation is like it's more like a negotiation. Yeah. And of course, people re will, will revert to the language they're comfortable with, depending on what outcome they want. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and so a middle class person who is versed in standard Jamaican English will right. flip to Jamaican patois if he or she decides that if she goes to that language, what kind of service or what kind of reaction they will I mean, get. For, for example, for example, the the, the housewives in in Norbrook who have who from time to time are forced to go to the market. When they go to Papi market, I go down to the coronation market. It's a whole different stance they take on the way they speak, the way they interact, the way they engage in order to gain their put to, to, to strengthen their position in terms of negotiating, in terms of getting better pricing, in terms of getting better quality products and so well, on. They used so to use yes. they used to use Papine market as a good example because you know yes. Papine market is pretty much near to UE. Right. And so they say if you shop at Pepin Market on a Friday afternoon and early Sunday, Saturday morning with a little basket, the women with a little basket, right. or man for that matter, in their hand, and the way they negotiate with the with the with the higglers who either come from up in the hills of St. Andrew or who are regular vendors in Papine Market, you'll get a different price than if you went late Saturday evening when the higgler then went wrong, got oh. a yard. <laughs> and if you're and if you're and if you're if your language is different and say, oh that person sound like and if they don't sound Jamaican, yeah, you know, you might also get a different um a different but we also want to understand you know, that Jamaican patwa is a is is also a language, is a weapon. It is also a language of resistance. And there are a lot of quote unquote right people who are using the Jamaican language as a way of what I call legitimizing their Jamaican-ness. Yes. yes. Right. I mean, we have had a student, for example, was doing PH, a PhD in, I think it was in biochemistry, and he never had a conversation, his lecturer said, in English. And one of them was most upset. You can't be a student of a PhD and talk like that. So I said to her, what do you mean by talk like that? Oh, he doesn't speak in English. I said, but don't you understand what he's when he speaks? But you cannot be. So what I'm saying, Paul. Yeah. And now we have there is a, lect a senior lecturer in government, um, Dr. Knife. Paul, he speaks no, well, let me say he does not, but he does not speak. He speaks Jamaican Patwa wherever he goes. I think from time to time, if, if he's at a conference, he'll do the code switching. Right. Because remember, now you have to understand your audience to get the kind of uh but what I, I start out by saying that I do not believe in the privileging of languages. Yes. And if we are if we are we must be very careful of putting down people who don't speak your version of English. Okay. And this and this business about first language in Nepal is universal. Okay, if you go to France, you get the same reaction to the Paris. If you go to if you went to the Sorbonne or the University de Paris, it's a different French from the French from Calais or Marseille. Similarly, if you go to Spain, 
if you go to the University of Madrid, yes, and or you live in Barcelona, remember that there's an issue about the politics of Catalan uh, and, uh, and yeah. Spain. Uh -huh. so even and languages are caught up in that yes. socio-political yeah. space. Yes, indeed. And so it is with our with our own country. So although we we think that if you are an educated person, you're cultured, um, <laughs> you go to the opera, yeah. you go to the to the symphony, yeah. and if you speak. What is called the Queen's English or can be the Queen's English anymore? It has been the King's English. Right. You have a rhythm account to a colleague of mine. Right. So in government and politics and in the professions, yes. Standard English. But I want to remind our our our, our listeners too and our viewers. Uh, they always say English is not so much English, you know. It's, it's it, it 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 as Conte Louis Bennett, it is a corrupt language in itself because it has taken from other. Indeed. Other languages to construct its own language. Yes, Paul. So yeah, man. So let me put up. Let me put a pause, and because what I what I really appreciate about this this presentation this evening is that it, it's laying the foundation so that we can continue probably one or two more parts because you have actually laid out a real good introduction as to how we go about communicating with each other. And as I have in the background there, the multicolored, the Jacobs colors of our colorful our languages. It's the same way you see all them close in the back line. When sun we up in the Rio Grande Valley, it's close up a hangout. We are not dry, we are not a washing machine, we are not a dryer. And you see the multicolors, that's how our language is rich nice. and nice. filled. With color. And it's in, and it's in the front yard. Yard, <laughs> and that is for our language. Our language is in the front space right now, anywhere in the world. As I tell this joke all the time, I have a friend who I met in 1984. We have a business connection to this day, and that man is still trying to say e, mm -hmm. and I am trying to explain to him that e mm -hmm is no definition for him. It can be crying, it can be laughed, it can be surprised, it can be questioned. To mm -hmm. so this day, the man still can't, no matter how him said he, if I answer the phone with him, it's the wrong way him say he, our language. But Paul, Which, but Paul does yes. say that he, an intonation of the voice, can have yes. different meaning. He, yes. He, 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 yes, man. So, so, with, of voice. Yeah. so with that, we're going to just take this opportunity to um, ask for our audience. Remember now, as I said, this is not a masterclass. This is not an English language learning. This is not a lesson in languages or anything like that. This is not a TED talk. We're just going to have, we're just going to have fun moving forward with the language and how we intersperse the language in our daily lives. So whether you're from Portland or St. Mary or St. Anna or Westmoreland or Manchester, we have a common denominator, which is our language. Food might be different. Where we speak might even be different across the nation. But I just want to bring this across. This is the language as a foundation where we communicate the sounds, as we said, the intonation of our voices, the way we speak from somebody in St. Elizabeth to somebody up in Narbo, from somebody up at Rio Grande Valley to somebody up at Manchester. But the language is the foundation upon which our nation. And if we understand how the world is trying to adapt a little, a little country, 1,400 square miles, Three million people, and how we have to influence the world from the way we talk about food to the way we use our language. I just want to take this opportunity once again. Thank you, Mr. Perry, Tony, as we didn't know you, Maurice, Maurice, Moray, Moray. Yeah, you, know, you see that kind of foolishness there. Uh, the, the ladies and gentlemen talking about our language. So we go apply for my visa, apply for my passport, thinking that my middle name is Bancroft. Them and them have it say it's Bancraft. I mean, can't get no passport until me sign up. So my name is Bancraft. Anybody ever know nobody named Bancraft? I mean, they find it's Bancroft for all my lifetime. That's, That's our language. And that the story, that yeah. the story repeats itself all, all over. Good. All day long. People it's But Paul, I language. want to say though that the yeah. Jamaican language has been yeah. not to be trivialized mm -hmm. because if you look at the work of Cassidy and Lepage by Hubert Devonish, because remember, it's a main oral language. And so what they have tried to do is to put, develop a written form. And in fact, we also know there have been translations in, in Jamaican English. Yes. 
in the Jamaican patois in books to enable people to look at the words that we have constructed. And, and, and they are not words constructed from English as derivatives of English. Yes. They are, in fact, if, and if you talk to the sociolinguists in the Caribbean, I mean, I tell you, Paul, we have people who have influenced worldwide this business of the Jamaican and the Creoles of this region. Yes. Okay? Yes. Well, those are conversation for another time. And I thank you yes, for sir. this for this opportunity. Yes, sir. Thank you again, my brother. And same All time, right. same place next week. All right? Take care. All right. Take care. All right, Bye. Good, good.